Hey everyone, it's me again, Brittany, and today we are doing my May plan with me for my reading bullet journal. I'm so, so excited for you guys to see what I did for this month. It took me forever, but I pulled through, I stuck it out, and I'm actually so, so happy with how it turned out. I did theme it around the Asian readathon that's happening for the entire month of May, and it is hosted by Read with Cindy. I will try and remember to leave that linked down below for you guys, just in case you're curious about it or anything like that. But I just took inspiration from one of her pictures from last year and just kind of went all in and I'm just so so happy with how it turned out and I really can't wait for you guys to check it out as well. And before we get on into the video I do want to say a big old thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. I absolutely adore Skillshare and I'm gonna be sure to touch more on them a little bit later on in the video so look forward to that just in case you don't know who they are. I've worked quite a bit with them in the past so you probably do. So yeah, that's it. I just wanted to make an intro. I feel weird when I try and edit my bullet journals when I have no intro, so this is the baseline. <laughs> Let me know, do you guys like intros with bullet journal videos or do you just wanna get right on into it? You want me to just like dive right on in with like the bullet journal already open? I would love to know because I feel like I've done it both ways and I think I prefer intros, but you know, I'm willing to change if that's what you guys prefer. Well, that's gonna be it for this kind of awkward intro, but I will see you guys in a moment as we dive into this bullet journaling process. Because when I tell you it was a process, I mean like my finger, it actually like blistered. It hasn't blistered since I was in middle school, probably before that. That was the last time. Look at it. Wait, focus, focus. See, can you see that? I feel like that was a lot of effort for nothing. <gasps> I do want to mention actually before we go all the way in, but I actually tried to paint my nails a little bit like Asian readathon y because I knew that I was going to probably be using white, black, and red a lot in the spread. So that's what I tried to do, and I'm just like, I mean, it's not perfect by any means. But you know, it's a little extra touch. We're here for it. <laughs> Alright, now let's let's quit with the chatter. Let's go in. <laughs> So just starting off, I'd already sketched everything out just because I knew there were going to be so many in-depth lines that I didn't want to have to do that all on camera. And I figured it would just be a little bit easier to outline it with you guys. But I just started off by writing out May and I did kind of try and copy the font from her videos from last year. All the thumbnails and everything that she had done, read with Cindy for the Asian readathon last year was in this kind of font and I tried to copy it as best as I could but other than that I love how I did my day's red spread because it's the little rice bowl that is the Twitter icon for the Asian readathon and this took forever. I mean it's really satisfying seeing it like this after the fact and seeing all the fun filling in but in the moment it took me at least a half an hour which is ridiculous, but the result was cute, so I'm here for it. And as if the little rice bowls weren't hard enough, I wanted to make it just a touch harder and try and draw these little fish that had been in the background of Read with Cindy's thumbnail for last year's Asian Readathon, and they were such a time. They were difficult for sure, but I had such a good time doing it. It's definitely outside of my comfort zone. As much as I love geometric animal kind of designs, I can never really do them myself. I just feel like the straight lines is a hard time, but I'm actually really pleased with how these ones turned out. And I did decide to leave it just red and white in the end, but I did go back and forth for a minute deciding whether I should kind of stick closer to the thumbnail where it was orange and red or if it would have looked cleaner this way. And for the sake of my spread, I think that it was just a lot cleaner if I left it red and white, and I think that I didn't have the right orange shade to properly emulate the thumbnail. And look at them, they're so cute, just swimming around. And I honestly got such strong Avatar vibes when I was doing these fish. And when I say Avatar, I mean the fish. If you've seen Avatar The Last Airbender, then I'm sure you remember the iconic sun and moon, or no, not sun and moon, it was the ocean and the moon 
fish in the water tribe and they always would circle each other kind of like a yin and yang and i just wrote out one of the quotes from avatar they balance each other push and pull life and death good and evil yin and yang and i just absolutely adore how that quote looks with it and it's nice to kind of bring in a little bit of avatar in this because we all know i love avatar so much and here i'm just adding little flakes that were on the rice and re-outlining may because i wanted it to be a little bit more distinct now the hard part with this was figuring out what other font I wanted to have going on because I didn't want it to just be that blocky one because it was so difficult to do. So I just ended up doing a very casual kind of script for my day's red and my key, but overall I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. The hard part was actually trying to figure out how to color in the rice bowls because I originally really didn't want to have to color in the rice because, you know, rice should just be white but I didn't want to change the bowl color either, so I just said F it and ended up just doing the rice colors in red and gray and a brighter red. So yeah. And now moving on to the next spread, I actually did change things up quite a bit this month for my reading journal and moved things around and I think that I am really pleased with how it turned out. So right off the bat, we just have my Asian readathon spread where I'm gonna write down all of the prompts and the books that I plan to read for it. I just feel like it's a good prep because that's really what my entire bullet journal theme was based off of for this month. So it doesn't make sense to have it at the end like I normally do. And I am really pleased, I think, with how it turned out. I mean, this is probably one of my least favorite spreads. I just think that I did the least with it and I didn't you know, get very creative with it, but it's usable, which is exactly what I needed. I just needed something functional to be able to write down all my TBR books. And I also left a little block at the bottom, if you can tell, because one of the underlying prompts in the Asian Readathon is to read books by different ethnicities, different Asian ethnicities, not just all Japanese or all Chinese, and I wanted a little area to be able to keep track of it and make sure that I was sticking to that goal and so that I could have the best experience possible. And then at the bottom, I just kind of wrote down the read along and watch along information because the group book is Little Fires Everywhere and they are doing a read along and a watch along for it. Not entirely sure if I'm participating yet, but it's good to have the information just in case. So now for one of my new spreads that I've never incorporated in one of my reading bullet journals before, and it's a calendar. Now that I've started actually bullet journaling and having like a life bullet journal, I've realized that I would like to have a calendar to be able to track when videos should be getting uploaded, when I should be editing and things like that. But I figured I have a whole reading bullet journal for that and I should kind of keep it in there because it's fun to fill out and it's good to see and it's nice to have everything in one place. I'm not entirely sure how this is going to go. I'm really bad at sticking to dates and everything like that, but maybe this will hold me a little bit more accountable. And again, this is one of my more plain spreads. These two right next to each other just ended up being a little bit boring, which is a bummer. I just wish that they had a little bit more of a flair like you'll see later on in the different spreads that I ended up doing. But again, it is functional, which is exactly what I needed from this. And here I just decided to add a little bit of a drop shadow because I did feel like it was a little too plain without one. And I think it added a little bit of flair, not too much though, but a little bit better. And now for one of my more classic spreads, just my hauled books, my TBR for the month, and my books read. I went back and forth on whether I wanted another TBR spread in my bullet journal for the month, just because the Asian Readathon one is already there. But I figured I might want to add more books to my TBR. I still haven't 100% planned out that video, but hopefully it's already up and you guys are enjoying it. But I did decide to ultimately put a TBR area as well. And uh, this one, I will warn you, ends up looking pretty differently than how it turns out in this time. After I finished filming, I just kept looking at this one, and this one was originally my least favorite spread out of all of the ones, and I just wanted to make it a little bit more fun and creative, 
So it does change a lot before the flip through at the end, but you will be able to see what I ended up doing, just not in live time. <laughs> And it was at about this point that I realized that the spread was a little too boring for my liking. So I actually went back to the fish drawing that I had done and I took a picture of it and I'm just cropping it right here so that I can get a better sticker of it because I do have a Foamemo printer or Foamemo. I'm still not entirely sure how to pronounce it, but I don't use it as much as I would like to and I love printing things out on it. So I've been trying to find some more uses and this was just the perfect opportunity. And I did turn the picture black and white just because it does only print in black and white. And I wanted to be able to see the kind of contrast that I could get on it before just putting it through in the color version. So I did print out just a regular kind of bigger size of it. And here I adjusted the contrast a little bit more and printed out a smaller version of it to use later on in my spreads. And I know it wasn't cropped perfectly, but that's why we're going in with scissors now. And I actually really liked this use for it because it just felt really cute and it was nice to be able to make use out of that drawing that took me so long in other parts of the spread. And now just for my book's red spread, which I always include and adore, but I just, again, copied that blocky font and I did it in one of my Posca paint markers. If you're ever curious about any of the tools that I'm using, I've been trying to be better about linking them down below, so just double check down there and hopefully I should have a link for it. I know that this one I do. And I just love using these paint markers and I knew that I wanted to likely outline it in red later and I feel like it just pops so much better with the paint markers versus just using the Tombow brush pens or even the Crayola Super Tips. And I wanted to go for a more minimalistic kind of style with this one and just have the simple red lines that block out the different uh, categories for the books that I read. And I did keep it just the same, just the book title and then we have the page number, the rating, the format, and the dates. So the date I started versus the date that I finished on. And that's kind of it for that. And then once I finished that outline, I did go back and look at the inspiration picture that I was looking at to see if there was any other doodles that I could do around this page. And I just saw all these kind of fun squiggly circle lines in the background around the fish and added those in. And now we move on to another kind of newish spread. I have been including brain dumps in general and that is on this page as well but I did decide to add a habit tracker to my reading bullet journal just because I love my habit tracker in my regular journal so much but I was finding that I was using my regular journal a lot and I felt like my book journal was getting neglected so I added in all of the bookish habits that I wanted to track in this little area right above the brain dump just because I think it's going to be interesting to see and it's a different take on stuff that I'd already been trying to track in my reading bullet journal, which is when I upload, if when I film, when I take bookstagram pictures, when I upload to bookstagram, things like that. And yeah, I did also add in a growth tracker again, just because I used to do that all the time and it was one of the coolest things to be able to see. And I just stopped out of nowhere. So I added it back in just out of curiosity's sake. 
but I did make the brain dump area a lot bigger for this month because last month I found that I'd ran completely out of space in the one page that I'd left for myself. I don't know if I'm gonna be using it as much. Honestly, I feel like brain dumps are dependent on the month and just what's going on in my life, but just in case, it's better to be safe than sorry. And yeah, this is another one that looks so boring in the beginning, but just wait until the flip through at the end because it's gonna be worth it. And here we just see my habit trackers. So I have my filmed, edited, uploaded, bookstagram, and then the growth tracker, like I said. And the growth tracker is both for my YouTube channel and for my bookstagram. And the little sticker that I printed out finally comes out. I, again, found that my spread was a little bit too boring. And I ended up actually cutting this one in half and kind of splitting it into two and putting it into the corners, which I think turned out pretty cute. I really wanna invest. I know that they have like a transparent paper and I think that that would be pretty cool for bullet journals. I feel like the white background is uh, not ideal most of the time. And now for the last spread. So I am doing a favorites spread and I do want to just kind of keep this a little bit more simple. I used to kind of go really hard for this and I just wasn't using it or liking it. So I just drew a little Polaroid where I'm gonna put my favorite book of the month. And here I'm actually drawing the fish that were in Avatar The Last Airbender. I just couldn't stop thinking about them and I had used the other drawings so much that it just kept coming into my mind and I drew the ones from the actual show and I actually really love how this one turned out. And I did it at the end because it doesn't exactly match the other theme of having all that red in it. It's just white and black and a little bit of silver. And I did have some trouble figuring out how I wanted to draw the whitefish because it's looking a little bit bland right now. But I did do the other quote that is Tui and Law, the moon and ocean push and pull. And that has been the nature of their relationship for all time, which is the other part of that quote that I wrote in the very beginning. And here you just see me start to shade because I did decide to go in with a little bit of light grays to kind of define the different features and uh, obviously go in with black for the other fish in the pond. And I just really love how they turned out. And then I just doodled fave and wrote a little arrow. And here I wrote quotes kind of behind the Polaroid and I figured I'm gonna actually write the quotes all around that background. And now just before the flip through, let's take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an amazing online learning community with thousands upon thousands of classes that were made for your everyday life. They have it all. I know personally I've been using the heck out of my Skillshare membership recently just with all of the extra time that I've had on my hands because of self-isolation and I normally do find myself going back to just photography classes or productivity classes, things that I already know and love and just want to get better at, but it's also been just the perfect time to pick up new skills and I have just really found myself enthralled with interior design. Having just moved, it's basically the biggest thing that's on my mind and it's a great way to preoccupy my time since I'm at home all the time and I've just really been delving into their interior design classes more and more. I feel like it's all I've been watching with the past two months or so. The class that I've most recently gotten into is actually taught by Rose Stanick and it's called Interior Design, Interior Decorate Like a Boss. And it's just a great cover all class that has to do with decorating and making your space truly your own. So if you're like me and want to pick up a new skill or get a little bit more creative, this is actually one of the best times because Skillshare has been kind enough to give me a link for you guys and the first thousand of my subscribers to actually click the link in my description bar below, are gonna get the first two months of their premium membership for free. A membership that normally costs about $10 a month for an annual subscription, so it's just a really good opportunity to learn if this is gonna be the right place for you. And yeah, let's actually get into my flip through now. And like I said, there are a couple of things that change, so I'll just kind of walk you through it. I left this page mostly the exact same, I just loved it. And then here I did try to add a little bit of color by 
doing the background in that light pink and kind of fixing up that read and wash along area to look more like a poster, which I thought was cool. And then this is where I absolutely adore it. I love that I made it almost like a watermark of the fish and the bowl of rice. I just think it's so cool looking. I mean, so cool looking that you'll see I did it again. And this one, I adore. I am gonna cry when I write over it in the brain dump area because it's just a watermark, but it's so, so beautiful. I am so proud of that. This page stayed mostly the same except for some accents on the fish, but other than that, we're all done. So I love you all so, so much. I hope you're staying safe and happy. Be sure to check out that Skillshare link if you're interested, and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye!